As one considers the dissolution of a single amphiphilic molecule in water, one quickly realizes that dissolution still involves the formation of a solvation shell of caged water molecules with lower entropy and higher enthalpy. However, it also leads to the favorable interactions between the hydrophilic head of the amphiphile and the OH groups of the water molecules. Something very special occurs in the case of amphiphiles that cannot occur in the case of hydrophobic molecules. Amphiphilic molecules, when present in sufficient concentration, can self-organize into structures that minimize the number of caged water molecules per amphiphile. As shown on this cartoon, the self-organization of amphiphilic molecules into lipid bilayers leads to a significant reduction in the number of contacts between cage water molecules and hydrophobic moieties. From 15 cage molecule per amphiphile to one cage molecule per amphiphile. It also allows all contacts between amphiphilic and water molecules to occur through the hydrophilic heads of the amphiphiles. This type of organization has a profound effect on the thermodynamic properties of these molecules. First, the process identified by the arrow leads to a large increase in entropy since it frees a significant fraction of the ordered cage water molecules, 14 per amphiphile in our cartoon. The process is also associated with a decrease in enthalpy, negative delta H, since all the unfavorable contacts between water and hydrophobic parts of the amphiphiles are now replaced by favorable contacts between water molecules and favorable contacts between hydrophobic parts of the amphiphile, without loss of the extremely favorable contacts between the hydrophilic part of the amphiphile and water. So, under the most favorable conditions, that is when the temperature is not too high, the change in the free energy of the system as a result of this aggregation process is negative because delta H is negative and delta S is positive. At higher temperatures, where molecular motion becomes sufficiently large, disruption of these interactions are possible and the self-organization of these amphiphiles no longer takes place. The same kind of argument can be used to explain why proteins can fold when exposed to water. Protein molecules contain amino acid sequences that are hydrophilic, shown here in red, and amino acid sequences that are hydrophobic, shown here in green. Upon dissolution in water, there is a very strong drive for the protein's hydrophobic sequences to assemble and minimize their contact with water molecules. This assembling is best achieved here intramolecularly through a folding process. As was the case for phospholipid amphiphiles, there is also a strong attraction between the hydrophilic sequences of the protein and water. So the protein dissolution process is facilitated by the favorable interactions between hydrophilic regions and water, as well as by the van der Waals attractions between the hydrophobic sequences, the so-called hydrophobic interaction, resulting in a negative delta H. The dissolution process is also facilitated by the increase in entropy, positive delta S, resulting from the decreased number of cage water molecules or the increase in the number of free water molecules that accompanies the folding process. At sufficiently high temperatures, as was the case in phospholipid amphiphiles, molecular motion is sufficiently strong to disrupt the van der Waals forces and the specific interactions, and leads to the denaturation or unfolding of the protein. In addition to denaturation at high temperatures, many proteins also exhibit denaturation at low temperatures, a process called cold denaturation. This latter process relies on the existence of hydrophobic interactions 
and the strong dependence of both the enthalpy and entropy of folding on temperature.